this hero definitely is. This guy, I think Nisha's going to destroy with it, with the OD this game. It's going to take a long time. Watch your courier, Nisha. No, Nisha. Oh, my. Uh. <laughs> well, suddenly it's all worth it. Yeah, they actually, well, he could have ported, right? After Fissure was used, sure. Yeah, he could have. Okay. He wants to. He wants to die. Yep. Wants to die, so he can. He's going to buy some regen tangos. If he stalls, he might get a clarity out of this too. Oh, he'll get it when he respawns. Firion bad is kind of a. Uh, Firion can do pretty well in this lane. But a fish block steps. mid, and Iceberg could be in some trouble here with the boots body block. Yep, so he's looking to set this one up for Nisha, who, with a couple more right clicks, might get this kill. It's going to be close. He gets it in the trees. Nice play from Yapsor. As opposed to Fly the Moon, the Batrider, he's not had the best start. He's looking to move towards this mid lane. Seems like he just doesn't want to lane against the Abaddon. Astral in the mid lane, going to set for Fissure. They want Iceberg. He gets blown up by the Sanity's Eclipse. Early Sanity's coming into play and always want to fly. One more right clicks could finish him off, but he couldn't get Vision for the last Arcane Orb. Generals rotate in, but gets purged up. But Baden isn't too terrible against Morphling either. Just because he can't really just like one shot you. I mean, in the laning phase, it's bad, but I could see Baden having some advantages. Does General die here? It sure as hell looks like it. His game, and you mentioned Kunkus having a rough one. I feel like Generals have an absolutely awful one as well, unfortunately. It's a big gold investment. It's, I guess he just wants, it's all about the movement speed when you see the fact he has like a wind lace as well. At least that's what, that's my takeaway is he's just going for all the movement speed. Yeah. Fissure gonna keep Nisha nice and safe. He forced stuff away from the tombstone. We have not seen much out of this undying, well, except for this, perhaps. Gets Another blown death. up in the mid lane. Yeah, this has been uh, a pretty rough one for Flight of Moon. There's no way Furion doesn't really work. Like Here's that. the move. Four-man smoke gank, Flight of Moon, taking over the enemy triangle, looking to find some kills. Nisha avoids this. Unbeknown to him, he has managed to juke this gank. They are still following from behind, and they're going to see this. Yapsor scouts it, blinks away instantly. Torrent's going to look for Nisha, but he does manage to dodge it. Then defensively, Astro himself, the Fissure's there. Yapsor doesn't have blink still, but Zai in the middle of the enemy, just trying to do what he can. The Lasso back on the OD. They need a shield for him, but Matu unable to help out the OD. Nisha pops the wand. He tries to force up away. Doesn't manage to keep himself alive. And it looks like Fly and Moon are winning this fight. They've taken out two. Matu still on the front line, trying to take out Rubik. Pops the ultimate with the Enchantress Puppy. All that attack speed. He's just shredding through him. Iceberg going to TP on out. As they refocus their efforts on always want to fly, his undying going down, and General could be next if Yapsor catches up to him. Odi not really nearly as impactful as a Morphling. Odie's having a good game, but not as good as Morphling is. Yeah. PKB is going to limit what Odie can do in a team fight. They're looking to take another one here. The Lasso going to come into play. They blow up Zai's Nature's Prophet. That's a, a dieback for him as Aloha Dance. We'll get finished off by a Fissure, but. Vitamin may look to continue taking this one. They've got a Morphling ready to go with that E-Blade on off cooldown for now, but looks like they're just going to give up the Undying and not re-engage. Still have a decent chunk of time left on this Aegis, so with Matu and Nisha can kind of play in the front lines very safely. And with the AC, you mentioned that's the item that could allow them to break high ground. That's going to be tested here. Matu, Flamebreak's going to push him out of the Torrent. Bit of anti-synergy there from the Planet Moon side, who are going to just halberd up the... Yeah, Abba. So Morphling will split push top while yeah. this is happening. He needs to. The goal is to. The goal is to have somebody on Secret TP back, but that oh. split push is a long way away from Secret space right now, though. And the T3 tower already going down to Matu, who gets E bladed up. One more right click. There we go. Do they do finish it off? But he's still got the borrowed time. Gets pulled back into a tarn. Pops the ultimate immediately. Gets banished oh, as well. That is wait, not the timing to use that astral. Have they oh, got a Rubik second? Did. They've got Rubik a second did. astral. Okay. Oh, Nisha. Couldn't find him. It was a stolen astral from the Rubik, as you mentioned. And OD couldn't save him with the defensive astral. Great play from Fly to Moon, and they may get more. He's got an Aegis, but if they can kill him twice, that'd be huge. v stolen the OD form. He tries to kill the Morphling with the Sanity's Eclipse. Doesn't succeed in doing so. v Way from forward. Defensive so astral, astral. yeah. No, <laughs> oh, that was an play. offensive one there. Okay. Rubik, Rubik did manage to steal it. They need to uh, make the Rubik one look different or something. I don't know. 
Yeah, it's kind of hard to tell. Rubik was actually the one that also used it on a bad end when he always just. And you have save. like, you don't really have save either. So like sitting behind a core isn't the most helpful thing. You have soul rip and a glimmer cave. But you know, imagine if you're like an oracle or like a vengeful spirit or something else instead. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, blink echo slam. Yep. So it goes on just to Rubik though, and Rubik gets kept alive by glimmer. They've killed off the shaker. And Nisha's in huge yeah, trouble. Yeah, he pops the BKB, but he's so low, he might just die the physical damage. Alesso's there as well. In general, he gets kept alive. He gets healed up by the Rubik with a stolen Mist Coil and Secret. They're getting Torn destroyed. Star. The Storm is just going around, dropping Torrents left, right, and center. The Iceberg Boat goes flying through as well, keeping them alive. They've killed three. They're looking for a fourth in Matu. He pops the ultimate. He may just die. He gets hit by a Morphling Stun. And zombies. Yeah, those zombies. That five damage adding up. Five damage times 10 zombies, that's 50 damage, Peter. Yeah. Yeah. They've got the stolen Aphotic Shield. This has been a fantastic Rubik game for Aloha Dance between the Astral and the Aphotic Shield. Yeah, this was a first pick Rubik as well. So Secret picked a Baden and Earthshaker into it, as well as OD. Yeah, I feel like we haven't even seen him trying to steal Fissure this game with all the other juicy spells, but definitely something that can still come up. Mat Matu getting E-Blade. They're just trying to force out his ultimate here. Borrow time. They can get that to proc. They might be able to kill him. They find the Shaker here with the Torrent Storm. The Abbot is just being locked down. He can't get out of these Torrents. And they're in all sorts of trouble on the secret side. They pop the BKB to try to keep themselves alive. Oh, but I think Fly to Moon realized their BKB is wearing out. They got to get out. They BKB TP on the Kunkka, the Morphling. Astro up. Does he have an escape? He gets Fissured coming out. He's losing a lot of health here quickly. Turns into an Abba. As he's going to shield himself up. Look to get out of this one. Has a wave for him in three seconds. Yeah, they need to get out and wait for their BKBs. b -tune has another wave for him, but is there going to be some Shaker Suns? The Fissure finds him as he comes out. The OG Sandy's not doing enough damage here. b -tune again gets Astroed up. Is there a stun to follow this one up? Wave from North. TP out. Blink Echo. Damn. They got him. Yep, Soar showing some love. And b -tune goes down. They're going to buy back. They want to contest this Roshan. They don't want Secret to get it for free. Cute. Lasso. Uh, puppy. He's got Matu running on in. Gets a miscall call off. He's too far for his shield. A nice flame break, but Puppy does get kept alive, and the damage just isn't there to bring down this Enchantress, who's just so damn freaking tanky with a holy locket amping up all his healing. They're going to buy back and force this fight. Nisha pops his BKB, gets off the Sandys with the Yapsar dunk as well to follow up Aloha Dance. He steals the Enchant Totem, unfortunately, and it is all over Red Rover that for Fly hurts. the Moon. No buybacks on two of their cores. Yeah, He's on a mission. Guy. He wants, and his eyes so tanky. He's got 3.5k health. Look at the lasso off. <laughs> Tipping but more Zai here. here. Yeah, Zai's still pretty damn tanky. He got him with the break. Wait for him. There's not enough room inside the sprout. <laughs> GG, yeah. Zai's still going to survive through this all. Oh, they high five. I like it. All right, GG. It is secret once again favored here in game number two. You can see the odds there, four to one roughly. Uh, blood Zai goes down. First blood to the Spectre lane, to the Death Prophet, the five DP that we were weren't sure about. He's doing. I'd say he's doing really well. Yep. He's definitely securing his lane for a Spectre, not a hero that often has a good lane stage. Aloha Dance. It looked like he was coming in to try stop Nisha from getting a bounty rune, and he did. Yeah, he killed the bounty, and then okay. always want to fly. Got the other one. I believe it was his build. Yeah, we were. I think that was like the first time we kind of saw it, at least here at ESL One. Now the coil. They're going to go in on the Ember Spirit. The silence falls up. The Chen Hill's kicking in. Is this going to be enough to save Nisha? Looks like it should be. He fire minutes away. The turnaround from Secret is going to blow up. Always want to fly in the Death Prophet and the Spectre. Had to just get the hell out. But, and also, as you mentioned, their damage output. So on the secret side, similar story. They're happy to keep farming. They managed to keep their Ember life just with Hand of God. Puppy wants a mech now as well to give them even more heals. Uh oh. Oh dear. Not the play he was hoping for. I mean, they kind of had the right idea where they wanted to fight, but then they lost that fight around mid tower and they've been, I don't know, not sure if they can actually take them on. I think because they got the. Going on Matu sure. here. Yep. Tries to get himself out of the cog, but the Spectre Horn's going to follow it up. Matu being healed up now as well. He's just turning and fighting, trying to use that Mask of Man to heal himself back up. He does die, but he's going to bring some Fly to Moon players with him, it seems. But the coil stops Nisha from chasing further, so a one for one trade so far. General's killing spree getting ended. And 
Nisha will get a follow-up kill. Actually, Zai securing it as they get a two-for-one trade. A big streak on the clockwork being ended. Yeah, Radiant actually having major damage issues. Fights. And they're also having issues with their puck getting picked off a few times in a row on the betting sites, but hookshot mid. We're going to see Puppy get initiated on. He's by himself. He's going to go down. Yeah. Oh, no. He brought in Ember. Okay. We'll see if this pays off. Ember may be like, what the hell are you doing? I'm sucking a coil into a silence. He does manage to illusion rune it off. Held on to that one. He's going to re-engage. Look to set up. Goes on Always Want to Fly, who does have one Spirit Siphon left, but he can't get a chance to pop it off. Spectre has Haunt here. Not looking to commit it, though. At least for the time being, as Aloha Dance's Demonic Purge is used without any follow-up. And... Nope. Yeah, haven't really seen it too much, though, mostly just because Zai hasn't really been the target for them. I feel like they're mostly focusing trying to kill Yaps or Anisha. Yeah. And I hey, just, you know, he's holding Scythe until after Disruption goes out, so Zai's just kind of done a good job. Fly the Moon of Smoked and grab some bounties, but meanwhile, they're tier 3 tower and now their Rax is under siege. So this smoke could allow them to go for a wraparound play from behind, but they've been scattered out. There's a Dire Observer on top of them. There's a root coming out in the puck and elsewhere. The, okay, nice disruption save. That's going to keep the Spectre alive from the Reaper's side. The feature may just turn, turn this fight for them, but he's still going to die. The damage is just too much for him. And it just seems like Secret of too much sustain here with all their auras. The Chen is just buffing everybody up. So they do lose the Sniper in the middle of it all, but they kill off three Force 2 buybacks, and they're still looking like they're going to take racks. Yeah, the rest of Secret's heroes are still super healthy. They'll be able to recall Sniper in when he respawns in 20 seconds if they want to continue for more. Yep. Matu getting a bit low. Killing off his own illusions. Is just life stealing up, healing yep. up. Retune is just going to get trapped inside a Sprout. No Quelling Blade for him. That was a dieback on Spectre. And that may be a Nisha. Another Searing Chain Slide of Fist. It's going to be a dead Death Prophet, and they're just going to go for the Tier 4s, perhaps. Matu is an absolute wrecking machine here in the front lines, and GG is called Flight of Moon, eliminated from ESL1 Birmingham Online. Team Secret, they may have uh, faltered yesterday against the Lions, but showing up and getting the job done.